Hi everyone. I wanted to create a short video and first just say that I'm really disappointed that we won't get to meet together as a class anymore. I've really enjoyed having all of you in class. You guys have been really great to work with so far, but I really hope that you're able to get a lot out of the class in this online format. Please, please, please email me with any questions that you have. I'm going to be checking my email really frequently and I'll get back to you really quickly. So what I've done is put together a brief PowerPoint on ways that you can cope with mental health symptoms during this really challenging time. As a clinical psychologist, I'm really concerned with the mental health and the overall well-being of my students. And we're facing so many rapid changes right now that it's really normal if you're having a flare up of mental health symptoms. So I'm gonna turn off my camera and share my PowerPoint slides and just walk you through some concrete steps that you can actually take to cope with stress, depression, anxiety right now. So change is really difficult for many of us, even during the best of times. And again, we've all gone through so many changes in the past few weeks, and there's likely to be more changes coming in the next few months. So just know that if you're feeling anxious, depressed, stressed, overwhelmed, or having a flare up of other mental health symptoms, that is totally normal right now. In fact, if you're not feeling concerned at all with what's going on, that might be more abnormal in these circumstances. Concern is really a normal adaptive response to have in the midst of a global pandemic. So I, I do ask you please not to be like other people that I'm seeing pictures and videos of who are still going out and partying for spring break, who are not taking any of the precautions seriously and essentially risking other people's lives while our healthcare workers, our grocery store employees, first responders, and many other people are putting their own lives at risk in order to save lives. So what I wanna point out is we've really talked about extremes in this course and continuums of personality, but that's a really important concept here. So there, the extremes are what we want to avoid and we want to be somewhere in the middle. The, on one extreme is not taking any of this seriously at all, not following any of the guidelines of the professionals and just acting like this is a normal flu or something that is not concerning at all. Meanwhile, the opposite extreme is panic, terror, really just acting like we're never going to get through this or this is the end of the world. So instead, what we really want to aim for is a response that's somewhere in the middle. And to do that, what we can really do is to focus on the things that we can control, which are things like taking precautions, so washing your hands, hand sanitizing if you can when you're out, practicing social distancing, and then focusing less on all of the what ifs and all of the things that we can't control right now. And also remember that anxiety is an adaptive emotion that we've developed in order to keep us safe. So our bodies have a built-in stress response system to keep us safe from threats. Our fight or flight system, if you've heard of that before, it's actually the sympathetic nervous system, becomes activated when we encounter any kind of threat in our environment. And that leads to a host of physical changes in our body. So things like increased heart rate, more rapid breathing, sweating palms, inhibited digestion, increased muscle tones, the tensing of the muscles in the body. And then normally, this response is adaptive because it makes us alert and it prepares us to deal with a threat. And then when the threat's over, our bodies receive a signal and activates the parasympathetic nervous system, also sometimes called the rest and digest system, which returns us back to a calm, balanced state. Unfortunately, right now we're dealing with a more sustained threat, which for many of us is sending our stress response system into overdrive, causing us to feel anxious, panicked, terrified for sustained periods of time, rather than just concern or low level anxiety. So the goal in the strategies that I'm gonna give you is not to get rid of our anxiety, but instead to focus on what we can control and how to cope with our emotions. So I'm gonna give you 10 evidence-based strategies you can use right now to help cope with heightened or overwhelmed, 
overwhelming anxiety. Okay, so the first one is to limit your media intake. So both social media and the news media. I've heard other experts recommending this and it applies outside of a pandemic situation, but especially now. So I have not been following this at all this past week. I've been checking the news constantly because there's so many new updates. I don't want to miss anything. And though it's really great to stay informed, there's no need for us to check the news or scroll social media on our phones all day, every day. If something really important happens, we will find out. Instead, what the experts are recommending is checking the news twice per day. Check one national source and one local source in order to stay updated on important breaking news but not overwhelming your system and constantly activating that fight or flight system by checking it all day, every day. The second strategy is tied into the first. So maintaining a routine, but also being flexible. So if you see this tweet here, this is basically been my routine for this past week is waking up, checking the news as soon as I wake up on my phone, watching the morning news to see what's happening, watching a midday press conference, checking my phone in between, watching the evening news for a few hours. And so I'm giving myself a break in doing that for this week, but I can already see that it's affecting my stress and anxiety levels. This is actually the first day that I've really tried to implement some sort of a steady routine. So even outside of the current situation we're in, it's really important for people with mental health disorders to maintain some sort of flexible routine and not to be too rigid. So you'll have to find what works best for you, but things like going to bed and waking up at a consistent time are really important for maintaining good sleep, which is important for maintaining good mental health. And then people who frequently work from home have suggested things like actually waking up at a steady time, showering, getting dressed as you normally would, and then creating some kind of flexible work schedule. So for example, one thing you could do or you could try is working on your classwork for a particular class during the time that you would have actually been there in person. So if you did that for this class, you would watch the videos that I'm going to post and respond to the discussion board questions from 9.35 to 10.55 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then that being said, it might not always be possible to stick to that kind of routine. So just be flexible and compassionate with yourself. But the main take home of this one is just trying to create some sort of routine so that your day isn't completely unstructured. The third tip is to activate that rest and digest system that I talked about earlier. So there are actually steps that you can take to activate your calming system, your parasympathetic nervous system. One technique that directly activates this system is calm breathing. So if you Google calm breathing, there are all kinds of audio meditations, worksheets, websites that tell you how to practice calm breathing. The most important and key part to all of these different breathing exercises is to really slow down your breathing and to actually exhale. Yoga is also a great way to integrate exercise with breathing techniques. I'm going to put in the links a series of free yoga videos that I love to practice at home. There's also an app called Down Dog, and I think there's several other apps that have made themselves freely available to students and teachers during this time. So you can check those out as well. If you don't have a yoga mat, there are many inexpensive options on Amazon. Relaxation exercises also directly activate this same system, the calming system in your body. A free app that I use a lot to do things like progressive muscle relaxation and guided visualization exercises is called Insight Timer. So that's a completely free app that has tens of thousands of free meditations. And then in addition to breathing and relaxation, think about anything that you've used in the past that's provided you with a sense of calm during stressful times. So it can be coloring in a coloring book, working on an art project or something creative. 
Marie Kondoing or organizing your space. So getting rid of all of the clutter that you have in your house, if that's something that calms you down. Don't do that if that's something that would stress you out, obviously. Listening to a live concert. A lot of artists right now are posting live concerts on Instagram or on the internet or listening to calming music or whatever typically calms you down. And I'd recommend spending at least 30 minutes to an hour each day on these types of calming activities. And that can make a really huge difference in your anxiety levels. I also really want to take a minute to talk about mindfulness techniques. So we actually have part of a lecture coming up in this course on mindfulness. But I want to go ahead and talk about it right now because it's one of the most important evidence-based strategies to managing stress and anxiety. So a lot of times we're stuck thinking about the past, especially negative events from the past. And when we do this, we tend to feel a lot of emotions such as shame, sadness, and guilt. And then on the other end, when we think about the future, which is what we're often thinking about, and especially right now in these stressful times, we tend to feel a lot of anxiety and fear. So mindfulness is focusing on what is actually happening in our bodies, minds, and the world around us right now. And it's a really great way to actually experience our emotions without judging our emotions. So you could do this by practicing a formal meditation practice. There are a lot of really great apps for this. One that I recommend is called 10% Happier. It's a book that is all about mindfulness, but they've actually created a website that I'll link here that has, they made meditations specifically for coronavirus anxiety. If you are not someone who enjoys doing an actual mindfulness meditation, you can do anything that puts you in the present moment and takes your mind off of the past or the future. 